Hey guys, welcome back to Learn with Rishi, your go-to channel for math education. In today's video, we'll be diving into the world of Venn diagrams and sets. These powerful tools help, help us and allow us to visualize relationships between different groups and analyze data in a more systematic way. Join me as we explore the fascinating concepts of Venn diagrams and sets and unlock their potential. So to begin our journey, let's start by understanding the concept a little bit more. Sets are collections of objects or elements that share common characteristics. And we'll delve into the various types of sets, including your intersections and your union sets and how they work together. And by the end of this segment, you'll have a solid grasp of what sets are and how they can be represented in Venn diagrams. So with that in mind, let's jump into question number one. So we've given a set and a set has been represented by this symbol here. Now we've been given A and B, which is within this Venn diagram here. And they're asking us to complete it. So the first thing we're going to do is start off by finding out what is common between A and B. So if we take a look, A has multiples of threes. So I'm going to highlight this in red here. So three, six, nine, 12, and 15. But then I'll take blue and I'll highlight the multiples of five here. And as you may have noticed that we have a red and a blue within the number 15. So what does that mean? That means that your A and B both share that number. So we will put that in the center. And then for the remaining ones, whichever are red, they will go into A, and whichever are blue, they will go into B. So again, we know that five and 10 was blue, so we'll put that as blue. And for the remaining numbers, which were in the multiples of three, that is three, six, nine, and 12. But what happens to the remaining numbers that weren't circled? Well, they would go outside of the Venn diagram, but still within the rectangular box. So that's one, two, four, seven, eight, 13, 14, and 16. And that would give us three marks in the bag. But for part B, it states, write down the probability of A intersection B. Hmm, what does intersection mean? Well, we have two main symbols here. N, which is your intersection. And what this is, is this follows through with everything that they share. So again, for our intersection, we would have one over 16 because 15 is the only thing that A and B shares. But if we were to say the union, then we'd have this symbol here. And this means everything within A and B. And we'll come across this in the questions to yet to come. Okay, so question two. We've got another Venn diagram, but this time they've given us some information. And they want us to write down the numbers that are in the set D. So again, that is everything in this set here. And we know that is five, six, and nine. And here we are, we've got our union. So C union D. So what does that mean? Well, that means everything in C and D. So we have one, four, five, six, and nine. And then for C, this says not C. So everything that is in the Venn diagram, except for what is in C. So again, we would be left with six, seven, and 11. And again, if I highlight this, we have six, seven, and 11. That is everything outside of C. Marvelous. Let's go for question three now. So they've given us 80 students in total and nine study French and German. So we can put that in the center there. And then it states that 35 students only study French. So that's gonna be 35 here and two students do not study French or German. So we can put that there. But if you remember, we had 80 in total. So it states, work out how many students study only German. 
So let's use part B to help us to complete part A. So we'll have 80 minus 9 minus 35 and minus 2, which gives us 34. So we now know that 34 students only studied German. Marvellous. Let's go for question four. At a wedding, the guests may have ice cream or custard with their dessert. And the Venn diagram shows information about the choices the guests made. So how many guests had custard? Well, let's go ahead and add these two numbers here, because that is within the custard region. So it's 9 plus 34, and that gives us 43. But how many guests had ice cream and custard? And that there we know is the intersection, which would be nine. And then finally, how many guests went to the wedding? So how do we do that? Hmm. Well, it seems you might not need to calculate the sum of all the numbers here. So if I go ahead and write that out, that would give me 107. And there we are. Okay, moving to five. We have a Venn diagram, and they're now asking for this symbol here. Hmm, that's quite familiar. If I'm right, that would mean intersection. So again, what they share. So what does A and B share? If you said four and nine, you're absolutely right. And then we'll do the opposite, which is a union, and that is everything within A and B. So again, we should have 4, 5, 9, 16, 25, and 36. And then finally, not A. So everything except for what's in A. So again, we can just cross this out as that is in A, and we're left with three numbers, which is 5, 17, and 40. Beautiful. And then for part D, what are the numbers in the diagram is chosen at random? Find the probability that the number is in set not B. So if it's in not B. So again, if it's in not B, we know that's going to be 25, 16, 36, 17, and 40. So that's five, isn't it? And there's eight in total. So all we need to write is five out of eight, and that is our answer. Beautiful. You're doing really well so far, so keep it up. And remember, you can pause the video at any given time, attempt the question, and then press play when you're ready to go. So with question six, a gym runs two fitness classes, spinning and circuits. So we'll draw our Venn diagram here, S for spinning and C for circuits. And on Saturday, 100 people visited the gym with 18 people attending the spinning class, 10 people attending both classes, so we can put that in, and 56 that didn't attend at all, so we can put that outside. Now let's come back to 18 here. 18 attended the spinning class, but we've already got 10 in there, so we'll just have 8 because 18 minus 10 gives us 8. So then how do we find out what's in the circuit area? Well, we know it's 100, so if we have 100 minus 56 minus 8 and minus 10, we should be left with 26. So that means 26 visited the circuits class. So we can write that as 26 over 100. Or even, if you want to simplify it, 13 over 50. If we look at those that attended exactly one class, then we can say 8 for the spin class and 26 for the circuits. So by adding that together, that gives us our answer of 34 over 100, or 17 over 50. And then for part D, attended the spinning, given that they attended the circuits. Well, we know that's going to be simply 10 over 36, because as you saw here, we had 10, which was in the middle. So they attended spinning, and they attended the circuits. So all in all, that's 10 out of 36, which is making sure that they also attended the circuits, which is 10 and 26, which gives us 36. Marvellous work. Okay, let's move over to question seven. 
Jennifer asked 80 people which sport they enjoyed from football, hockey and rugby. So how many people enjoyed all three sports? Well, that means we need to look right in the centre. What we see here is 31. So with that in mind, that is our answer. And how many people enjoyed football and hockey, but not rugby? So football and hockey, that's 14, and that's not rugby. And then how many people enjoyed football and rugby, but not hockey? So that's football and rugby, and that's 17. And then for part D, work out which sport is enjoyed by the most number of people. So how do we work this one out? Well, the first thing would be to calculate how many people like hockey. So that's adding everything within hockey, which then would give us 55. Then everything within football, which looks as if it's 66. And rugby, which is 56. So altogether, we know football is most popular. And so we can write that down here. And that's by simply just adding up all of the rings one by one until you get the total answer. Marvellous. And with that in mind, that brings us to the end of our part one. Congratulations, you've now mastered the art of Venn diagrams and sets. These visual tools and analytical techniques will enable you to organize information, solve complex problems, and gain deeper insights into various data sets. Whether you're analyzing survey results or tackling probability problems, Venn diagrams and sets will be your trusted companions. So if you found this video informative and enjoyed our exploration of Venn diagrams and sets, then be sure to give a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more math related content. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Thank you for joining me today. And until next time, keep exploring the fascinating world of math. See you in the next video.